Hello, and welcome to Carolina Classrooms. I'm Laura Ibarra. On this episode, we will explore workforce development programs in South Carolina. Your match is on the line. You have match point, and you have to win it to send your team to state. There's a lot of pressure. Having experiences with pressure and leadership from my CTE classes have helped me excel in tennis. I've always had some sort of passion for business. I like managing people. I love talking to people, presenting things. The CTE classes are different than regular classes. You get to do more hands-on real-life experiences. It connects yourself to the real world every class that you take. Supply chain management is getting a product or service the most cost-effective, best, fastest way possible to the customer. There's different products out there that have to meet demands. If you mess up in your supply chain just barely, that can affect so much. You have to be focused on every task you do. When that whole process works out really well, it's extremely satisfying. The Port of Charleston definitely inspired me and surprised me at the same time. To make sure a port goes that smoothly takes a lot of guts and a lot of intelligence, and it takes someone that can be able to manage all of that. I have a lot of respect for everybody that works there. My goal is to do something in business, whether it's supply chain management, work at the port, be a port manager, and later on make foundations so that people can also find what they're really passionate about and explore their career options. Students can learn more about CTE programs on our website, on our social media platforms, or most importantly, asking your school counselor. Manufacturing is a top industry in South Carolina, with companies building and shipping cars, tools, tires, and more. The Southeastern Institute of Manufacturing and Technology at Florence Darlington Technical College trains students to keep up with the demand for skilled workers. The SIMT opened in the fall of 2007 and we were built to support industry, education, and economic development. Um, we have a, four business units that run out of this building as well as an, uh, the Gold Business Incubator which is next door. And those four business units are advanced machining, uh, added to manufacturing which is also known as 3D printing, uh, the social media listening center, and the facility itself. And um, our job is to make money to support the college and our students. In addition, we house the college's uh, two-year machine tool technology degree. So anytime you hear somebody talk about skilled workers, machinists, tool and die, that's the program they, they're referencing. We also have industrial maintenance technology. They learn about pretty much every kind of machine. They're the ones that make the machines run in a facility, in a manufacturing facility. And then we have all of the two-year engineering programs at the college, which is civil engineering technology, mechanical engineering technology, and electronics engineering technology. We have a 96 or 98 percent placement rate for graduates of the programs that we house back here. I am a graduate of Florence Arlington Technical College. I graduated in 2020 with a degree in mechanical engineering technology. Mechanical engineers, we uh, design things, machine design, um, tooling design. There's even some structural things in there. I'm now with Sunoco um, and I have been there for about a year and a half. I'm a design engineer at Sunoco, so we design prototype tooling. Um, we have two 3D printers as well. Um, so we also control documents, um, so machines, um, plant layouts, machine designs, parts, um, tooling, um, even customer specs, we control the drawings for it. So um, I, I use 3D CAD software um, to design and manipulate parts for manufacturing. By graduating from a a degree program here at Tech, I was able to get placed with a job with a very competitive um, wage for, for my age range and my experience level. It's funny because Sunoco actually pairs um, better with what I learned here at Tech because um, they, I, my group, um, we run two 3D printers, so it pairs very well with what the SIMT building also offers. Um, so I use the 3D program that that I learned here in school and I also get to play around with all the things that I love to do in school and I get paid to do now. So it's, um, I just, I love my job. I came to school here in 2006, 2008. 
Uh, I actually worked second shift at a manufacturing facility in Florence, and I was able to go to school during the day and go to work at nighttime for two years straight. Yeah. A lot of the you know, industries around here, they have internship programs for the students. Most of the time before the students are even out of school, they already have jobs. I was in the machine tool technology program. Uh, machine tool technology program teaches you how to uh, uh, do 2D drawings, uh, 3D models. It also teaches you how to uh, do different uh, CNC programming. But they, they teach how to make tools and how to make products from tools. Uh, fixturing and everything too for manufacturing ability. I went to Francis Marion to get my electrical engineering technology bachelor's degree, but for me to finish it, I had to transfer here. My primary focus was just on the electrical engineering technology um, because of how the program was set up. I went there for a majority of my courses, transferred here to tech to finish up with my um, hands-on learning with more of the um, electrical knowledge, getting hands-on to build circuits, um, seeing how circuits work on a hands-on level. The main thing I notice is with the theory base, you basically learn how this is how it's supposed to work. These are the formulas you're supposed to use. Versus when you get hands-on, you actually see it at work. So now you can actually get a better understanding of the basis that you learn beforehand. While I was here, I actually got an internship at Otis Elevator right down the road. Um, because of how I only had a couple more semesters left, I ended up being there for almost a year. Um, and whenever I finished, they actually offered me a job there. I've been there all, it'll be 10 years next year I've been at Otis. It's a learning opportunity. There's a lot of growth there. Um, there's a lot of different challenges from day to day, so you get exposed to a lot. The education I received here prepared me for my current role by exposing me to a lot of the materials I've used, like multimeters, um, reading schematics, understanding different symbols, and trying to think outside the box with troubleshooting. So we got exposed to different circuits here and had to kind of figure out what was wrong and what we needed to do to fix it, which benefited me a lot in my current job right now. It, it makes it easy to get the experience that you need moving forward, because I know that's like the hardest thing is getting the experience on your belt, because a lot of companies now are looking for you to have a few years of experience. So that made it easier for me to get the experience and learn a lot at the same time. So we educate students, but then we also train workforce. We have forklift programs here. We have a program called uh, Manufacturing Skills, and it is a one-week program at the end of which you have a forklift certification, an OSHA 10 certificate, and a yellow belt in manufacturing. And um, on Friday, we have manufacturers come in and hire you. And so we'll have them come in, interview, and hire people who've just done this one week of training. It's really important for the SIMT to exist um, in this region of South Carolina, but for the state. As I said, we, we do 3D printing for or added to manufacturing for lots of companies. We've done work for BMW and, and you know every size manufacturer. We have very strong apprenticeship programs and internship programs for our students. Really, we're here to help grow everybody's workforce. The SIMT resources can be used by corporations and the public for events, training, and business needs. For more information, check their website. Many of these products are carried to their destination in semi-trucks. Operating these vehicles requires a commercial driver's license. Orangeburg Calhoun Technical College offers a 16-week program to prepare new drivers for the journey. They have 180 hours of training in order to get their license. So they have to have 16 hours of driving time. They have to have OBS time. They have to have 50 hours of class time, 50 hours of yard time. OBS is observing. That's when one student's observing another student driving and listening to the instructor as to the instructions. I teach them how to shift. I teach them how to drive in the city, drive on the interstate. We also teach them, or I teach them, how to back, you know, do their skills how to do an inspection, which is the parts on the truck. The most important skills is the backing, um, knowing where your trailer is at at all times. The backing process is always the hardest. When backing an 18 wheeler, if I turn right, it makes my trailer pivot to go to the left. 
If I turn left, it makes my trailer pivot to go to the right. The difference in between an 18 wheeler and a car, we don't have that back mirror to say, well, oh, I can look in that mirror. We have to use our side mirrors because it helps us see the whole side of our trailer while we're backing, because we have a blind spot. The cost of the program is approximately around $4,700, depending on whether you're in county or out of county. We teach the basic um, for us like our students and most um, truck driving schools um, at this early stage a student is not really having any weight on the actual tractor they can have like dummy weight um, so we teach them the basics um, on a simulate we can simulate um, some things on the simulator with bad weather um, you know snow things like that we don't do ice but we can do snow and high winds and things like that. We use the simulator a good bit. That helps them to learn the coordination of how to double clutch and shift their gears before we put them in the truck. The simulator is um, a, a very special part and very important part of our learning process. Any student, the simulator helps. We have a lot of them that do not even know how to drive a standard. So the simulator kind of helps them prepare for what they're gonna be doing in the trucks. Mainly, they'll come here, they get their basics, and once they finish our program, we try to align them with a company that's actually going to finish their training, all right? And from there, they'll learn how to drive in different um, situations, real-time situations with a load, dealing with customers, um, and of course, with that night driving, because night driving is no longer federally required, but we do have night classes, so they'll get that once they get their job with an actual company. They will be prepared for over the road driving. They will be prepared for in-house driving, which is what we call state driving. It's intrastate, which means they cannot go across state line um, if they're 18. Uh, they have to be 21 to go across state line. So any of the over road drivers has to be 21. But they will be prepared for any driving job out there. High school students at the Cope Career Center and the Dorchester Technology Center start with the basics behind the wheel. I go to Cope for um, my CDL class and I just, I go there from eight to 11 and we usually just drive and learn. We started um, five years ago and it's just for high school students. I don't teach anybody that has already been through school or you know, there's just my seniors that come. Um, they have to be 18 years old, have to be able to get their license or get their permit by the time they leave me in June. Okay. So I give them all their classroom time is done with me. They do um, 120 hours of um, what they call TDR 101, which is basically the basics of truck driving. Um, and then TDR 105, which is the regulations and uh, demands that is going on right now that you know that has changed here only recently so that's what they're getting with me and then they'll leave me after 18 weeks and come straight to tech and finish up with their behind the wheel time I've got actually two students that are over here right now that they'll actually have their CDL before they have their diploma I want to go I want to drive the trucks for the military go to the military and drive trucks yeah. I would I want to experience the world so Yes, let them see me Because when I get older, I want to drive trucks. It's just, I like traveling. I like driving. Truck driving was, since I was a little boy, my daddy been driving truck. So I had like a passion for driving truck. So first I thought of that coat to get my permit, and then I transferred over here to get my license. But then I plan on driving with him, and then we going to, yeah, be like that. They'll get out at 18, have CDL. The downside, I guess, if, of it is that they will only be able to drive in the state of South Carolina until they turn 21, okay? But they are employable, you know, and with the trucking industry being where it is right now and the demand and the lack of drivers, um, you know, we got companies that are waiting for them. It's what you make of it, any job. And I, t I try to teach students 
that come in, because I hear the same thing. A lot of students want to get into truck driving because they hear the stories about the money, but they don't hear the cons, okay? It's a lot of money to make in the trucking industry, but you're going to sacrifice a lot of home time, family time. There's a lot of things that you're going to sacrifice to make that money. So I tell each student to find a balance. We have recruiters that come in and they talk to a student and they might have something that a student like want to hear. You have to find that balance. If home time is important to me, I want to go with a company that's going to provide home time for me so I can be with my family. Um, if benefits is one of your main things, you know what I'm saying? So don't just um, come out and just want to chase the money because a new driver, in reality, you really don't start seeing the money till you actually are no longer considered an entry level driver. So once a student leaves here, for another year, they're still considered an entry level driver. So it's, it's just time in and getting to know the industry and getting to, getting to what's comfortable for you to be successful in this um, industry. But I try to steer students away from um, making a lot of money you know, in the industry because if you come in the industry wanting that, you'll find yourself burnt out really quickly. My, my, my kids, what they say, are students. I don't like calling them that because most of them are adults. Even though they're 18, they're young adults. Everyone that I train is my legacy. So when I leave, my leg legacy is going to move on. It's, it's, it's going to move on through them. And I hope that they give them the same patience and help that I've did with them and teach them to be uh, safer drivers on the road. Just safety, 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 you know, because that's what it's all about. It's not only being a driver, but it's being a safe driver that counts. One of the first video game competitions took place at Stanford University in 1972. Competitors played the game Space War, competing for the grand prize, a year subscription to Rolling Stone magazine. Since then, video games have grown in popularity and become more sophisticated. With more elaborate graphics and streaming options, it's possible to compete with players around the world. The eSports program at Benedict College prepares students for the world of competitive gaming and other associated careers. Esports is electronic sports and it is a competition, competitive organized competition among students in a particular game. It's just a competition between either one individual and another individual or a whole group of people versus a whole another group of people. It's competitive gaming. It's gaming on a pro level scale or an amateur level scale. You're just playing together, you're playing against organized teams from any and which way. Esports, I mean, esports has always been a thing. I think that people are just finally starting to realize that how entertaining it is, especially like at events. Um, just seeing it like firsthand, it's absolutely entertaining, just as entertaining as watching a sporting event. And some people may find that hard to believe, but someone that plays sports, I can truly attest to it. Um, and then I think that COVID was like something that may have sparked under like the esports because everybody was inside. So the only entertainment they got was online and on the internet. When we talk about traditional sports, it's now, you know, probably the, the you know, ESPN, which is the biggest engine of, you know, broadcasting sports and athletics. They now have a, a segment for it. Um, they sponsor it. Um, some of these terms are, are, are rented and, and, and played at big stadiums. You know, people pack them out to come and, and watch people play. Uh, there, are, there are kids who, you know, who game and are on YouTube and have a social media presence who, you know, make vast amount of money because, you know, they're so talented at, at playing the game. And, and, and there's, a, there's a large group that wants to, you know, kind of follow in their footsteps. So I've actually played in the Mountain Dew Real Change Challenge Tournament not too long ago. Uh, it was a $500,000 tournament and it was the first time representing the school so that was a pretty big thing for me. The experience was, well, it was wonderful. It was an amazing experience.
We just got back from a tournament in Atlanta playing Call of Duty, that's why. We're in the Highlanders um, hoodie, so yeah, I came back from there. And it was a fun experience overall in Atlanta, being able to play with my teammates. All of them did the best that they could, and you know I'm happy about their performance. I mean, even though we ended up losing, I mean, it was still a great experience, and being able to make those connections were amazing. It helps us out just because it gets our name out there. Because even if we don't take home the win, it's still showing people that we at least made it that far. The fact that we made it to regionals, and the fact that we made it to a land tournament, it's definitely a big, um, it's a big deal and to be able to you know make it that far and to show people that we have the resilience to at least not be one of those teams that can not get knocked out the first round it's definitely um, just ch showing people how serious we are about playing and you know it just you know it gets our name out there and people get to see that or we get to at least put our school on the map and show them that you know we're here to play Recently, I've, won, I've gone to the Valorant tournament uh, in Atlanta. Um, our group went, drove down there, had a great time. I also went to a NASCAR event, which was a first for me. I had never seen um, a NASCAR race live, and that was, that was loud, but it was fun. Uh, there was a tournament in a game called Rocket League, and so before the, game, before the race started, we were outside the stadium playing the game with a bunch of different other colleges. And I got to meet them, got to meet the people who were in charge, and I got to play, and then we went to the event. But eSports e is not just about gaming. There's so, more, there's so much more into it. There's so many opportunities and jobs out there in the eSports field, and the fact that they were able to make it like a major and a minor here is huge. Well, it all started from my president, um, Dr. Rosalind Claw Audis, and we were in a faculty meeting one day, and COVID had hit of course the world and she has stated to all of us she said you know what we're gonna have to have sports even if it's just um, esports I have been following esports for a couple of years so I made another call to her office and said okay all right I keep hearing the word esports what can I do to be a part so she um, connected myself with our athletic director and myself and um, Coach Washington, we began to come up with a plan to be able to start esports on the campus. And, and we had to educate people about esports and the career opportunities and things that our students could actually do with esports. And a lot of people, they, they, they think, well, you, you're just playing games. It's more than just playing games. We have a lot of students, they work here in the game room and they're not gamers, but they know how to operate the game room. They know how to act as our IT specialists. They know how to host the tournaments. So it's just more than I'm just sitting here playing video games. My major is sports management. My minor is psychology. So what I do is I intern with Dr. Shelby and what we do together and as a whole when I'm with her, we kind of maneuver through the esports room and just double checks with the gaming and anyone that comes into here that just wants to play esports. I'm a studio art major with a minor in history and right now I'm taking a digital art class and I basically make any kind of piece of paper that the esports team needs, whether Dr. Shelby needs a contract drawn up and designed on our letterhead, or if she just needs a new design for whatever tournaments we might be in. There's actually a lot of different pathways and careers that go into esports. And we talk about it all the time in class, not, and not just in our esports classes. We talk about it in our, our traditional sports management courses as well. And there, there, there are places for artists, musicians, uh, writers, editors, you know, the positions for technicians, um, you know, for producers. I mean, it, 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 it could possibly be endless. You could be a coach, you could be an administrator, you could do marketing, you could do broadcasting, you could do lights. Um, it, it is really limitless. Everything that you think about in terms of physical sports, there is an avenue for esports. My major is esports administration and management. And my A plan for the future is hopefully to go pro in Call of Duty just because that's the game that I am currently playing right now and it's the game that I have a passion for so definitely that's my plan. Um, my backup is trying to make it on an esports company or trying to make it into um, some sort of area of esports either in like game development or even just working with um, advertisement with gaming just in general. 
Right now, it's, since there's so many uh, opportunities in the sports industry, uh, I'm still looking, like broadening my horizon and asking people around, because there's so many jobs that I just didn't know that existed. So I'm, I'm still looking out for that specific job that I, I like. I want to uh, have my own organization connected with uh, the low income community and schools. I will want to uh, give kids that, you know, grew up like me, you know, in South Central LA, you know, didn't have much at times, you know, give them an opportunity to experience the same thing I did with, you know, when it comes to this room and whatnot, you know. I want to just show them that you don't just need to play those typical or traditional physical sports, you know. You can play games, which, you know, so many kids in my area love to do and they can get good at it. But if you're not good at games, there's a plethora of things that is going. The esports industry is always growing. There's always a job for you in the esports industry. Uh, so I learned teamwork, leadership, cohesion, you know, it's, it improves. It helps me learn that there's a lot of diversity within us. So, you know, it helps me learn to how to work together and, you know, critical thinking, problem solving, all of the above, really. There, there's a load, um, not just about playing games, but team managing. So that's, that's another thing I do, event coordinating, talking to other schools, colleges. Um, you really gain confidence and just it's little skills you never knew you could get or gain, and it's, it's been a game changer. Thanks for joining us. Join us for our next episode, March 16th. We'll share the work of student journalists.